So this is a story that I uh, was shown to me today, and um, not by anyone, not by anything. I didn't read it, I didn't hear it, I didn't just dream it. I I saw it. I saw it play out today. So I thought I thought I'd share you a story that was told to me by a light. It was brought to me by a light. So our story starts here. Now forgive the drawings because they're not going to represent the story exactly accurate. You may just want to close your eyes and just dream it or I might release um, I might release a digital like kind of drawing type thing where I draw it digitally and show it to you. But for now you're just going to have to deal with this. So it starts here. And here there's a planet. And they have gone out, they've expanded very far. See, this is a planet, and they've almost explored their whole galaxy, really. And there's not much left for them to explore, so they decide to send a man. They send one man, and they get him all geared up, they give him tons of resources, and they give him one giant uh, space voyager. And this man... They tell him, you know, they say, we're going to send you on a very special mission to explore whatever else is in the galaxy. So they send him to the edge of space. They just send him out. And he makes his way, and he goes very far. Eventually, just, he comes to here. And he sees something in the distance. And he tells them, I, I see something. I think there might be something there. I I see I think there's something. And eventually, as he's right, the spaceship lands and he's on a planet and he goes to tell the people he goes to tell the people he lands about right here. And he go when he goes to tell the people, there's no response. So he looks at his gear and it says he can't make a connection. And it's same for the people back in our gal back in our galaxy here. They can't reach a connection with this guy, and they don't know where he is. They have no clue where he is. They only know the general direction he left in. They only know the general direction he left in. And so now he's here. And he decides, well, I'll look around, and he finds some trees. He goes about, about in a radius like this. You can kind of see it. He goes like this, and he builds himself a little hut right here, a little shack, with all the resources he's gathered from the trees and whatnot. And he goes to bed, and he wakes up, and he decides, well, let's go exploring. So he comes, he comes down here, and he finds a swamp. Now down here is a swamp that takes up. It's almost, it's very circular, something like this. And he sees, almost directly across from him, he sees an opening in the other side of the swamp. So he goes and he investigates this opening in the other side of the swamp. And what he finds is, as he keeps going, it definitely is an opening. He finds a cave. So there's a cave about right here. And... Hold up. Yeah, okay, I just thought I heard a noise. And in this cave, he goes down, he goes down into this cave, right? He comes down into a cave, and he gets down, it's very steep, but, I mean, you know, there's some rocks, he can climb up a little bit, and it's not incredibly steep, it's not straight up. There's still some room for him to climb up and down. So he comes down, and he starts to hear something. He hears what sounds like a worm or something, and he can feel it almost directly beneath him. Feels what feels like a giant worm underneath him. And he's standing about right here when he hears this giant worm. And anyway, he hears this giant worm and it starts to get in his brain. He can't see it, but he can definitely feel the vibration of it moving. It's shaking everything. And he can feel it all in him. 
and it gets into his brain. He can almost see a vision of the worm in his head. And he tries to get out of this cave. He thinks, this is not right. Something is messed up. So he gets, he tries to run out of this cave. However, when he gets about here, he's unable to. He starts getting, he starts getting all dizzy and getting all weird. His vision's getting all cloudy and he's getting dizzy and disoriented. And he falls back down to about here, but he climbs up. He tries to climb up again, but he falls back down. And he tries again and falls and again and falls. And he tries one last time and he almost gets there. But he falls all the way to the bottom. And here he loses consciousness when he falls to the bottom. And by this point, the worm has left his brain. It's just, it's no longer there. And he loses consciousness, right? And he has a dream while he's here. He has a dream that he's back in... I'll draw it on the other side of this paper. I'll draw the dream. He has a dream that he's back in the swamp. So he's back in the swamp, and as he's here, he's directly in the middle of it. And his shack, the entrance to his shack, is about here, and the entrance to the cave is about here. And he and he sees in his vision, he sees a bit of a light, and he sees an entrance down here. So he follows this, and as he follows it, it leads him to a river coming from the swamp. And up here, here, he's all surrounded by trees. In fact, this whole area is surrounded by trees, basically. This whole area is surrounded by trees, but even here, the trees seem... They seem thicker, almost. Very thick surrounding this river. There's no way he can see anything. He follows this river. And eventually, it leads him to what seems like an ocean. And... The trees end, and there's just a shoreline. And out here is all the ocean. This whole area is the ocean. He now kind of gets an image that his shack is in this area, and the ocean is over here. He doesn't know how, but he somehow missed the ocean when he first came to this place, all surrounded by trees. His shack is here, his rocket's about here, and he comes down here, and... There's the trees, and then this river, and then the ocean. And he goes down, he walks down the ocean, and eventually, in the distance, it kind of looks like mountains. kind of looks like there's mountains far off in the distance. And as soon as he looks at them, he says, Wow, are those really mountains? How big is this planet? And then it ends, the dream ends. He finds himself... Finds himself awake again in the cave, and he says, "Well, I, I'll stop trying to go back up. I'll just go forward." So he goes forward. He attempts to go forward. Then he goes forward down into this cave. And by the way, I just want to note this whole planet is a very vibrant red. It like it's almost glowing. It's all it's only red and black. It's just red and black. There's no need for lights because. It almost makes its own light, it seems like. But there's also a fog that covers the whole island. So he's wearing a gas mask as this happens. He wears a gas mask the whole time. So he goes until eventually he finds himself in a ravine. It's very weird. In this ravine, like, he can see the daylight again. But there's a river in this ravine. There's a river in this ravine. That kind of comes out of the bottom of the ground. And he fo it's a very shallow river. He can walk in it easily. So he follows this river. And at the end, it looks like he sees something that looks like... Someone that looks kind of like a mermaid standing here. Looks like there's a mermaid about, about here. And the mermaid kind of gestures towards him, you know. Kind of like it's holding both its hands up to, like, ask for something almost. Like, he wants him to come there. So he, he walks to the end of this river, and he gets to the mermaid. But as he's almost to the mermaid, the mermaid takes a step back and walks up a ladder here, up this sharp cliff. It's not really a cliff, it's more of just kind of a big rock. And she climbs up this ladder, and she's now on top of it, still asking for him to come there. 
So he goes, and he climbs up the ladder, but as soon as he gets to the top and climbs on top of it, he finds himself trapped. He's just trapped. Just in a circle. Just like in a circular, kind of spherical opening in the ground. He doesn't know how it happened. One moment he was at the top, next thing he know he next thing he knew he blinked and he was stuck inside a sphere in the ground. It was very odd. And it was very tight. You see, he lays across the bottom and he takes up about that much space when he lays across the bottom. If he stood up he would basically be able to reach the top. And as he's down here, he thinks, well, how am I going to get out? I think I'm going to die. But just as he's thinking that, he's interrupted by water. Water starts to come out of the bottom, and now he thinks, well, I've definitely, I'm definitely dead. But instead of drowning him, he, gets, he floats on the water, not even attempting to. He just floats on it. And the water keeps rising and rising, so eventually he's kind of like this at the top, kind of opposite of how he was at the bottom. And the water keeps rising and rising, so eventually he just bursts through the top. It just pushes him through the top. And he finds himself in the center of the swamp, just like in his dream. But this time it's not a dream. He's really here in the center of the swamp. He knows, he paces himself, and it's definitely real. So he looks and he sees... Just like, and just like in his dream, there's an opening in the bottom left. It's very odd. So he follows this, and he goes, and there's a river, just like in his dream, and it's covered by thick trees, very thick forests. But as he keeps going down the river, he sees an opening, like he goes straight back up, very far. There's an opening in this whole area, and at the very end, he looks like it, he looks to see, and it looks almost like there's a giant spider of some sorts. You can clearly see the legs. You can clearly see a body, but it's very far away and very hard to see. Especially with the fog in the area and the very odd red color. And he says, whatever, the spider's not bothering me, and I don't really want to bother a spider. That seems like it's ten times my size. So, <laughs> he keeps going down the river. And eventually he reaches the ocean, just like in his dream, and he follows the shoreline again, but unfortunately this is well, this is the end of the story that I heard. And the story giver seems reluctant to tell me the ending, but I'll keep you guys updated if I do get an ending of this story tomorrow. Uh, I was just, once again, the storyteller, I didn't read it, I didn't hear it, I experienced it. It wasn't about me, it wasn't me, but I watched it. I I watched it from a light. It was, I don't know. I might sound crazy, but I'll keep you guys updated if I learn any more of the story.